name's John Ron Cannell uh, from Clemson Anderson area. South Carolina grew up uh, here. I went to Clemson University about 10 years ago and a uh, uh, former airline pilot and corporate and charter pilot and I've started Clemson Air Charter here in uh, Anderson, South Carolina. Uh, why is it important to have a charter service locally for people? Because a lot of people don't they've never done it or don't understand how it works. Tell people what that's why that's an important element for an airport. Uh, it, it's a good question. It's a we provide an on-demand service. So think of it as renting the whole airplane instead of buying a seat on an airline. The other difference is we are direct. So we go from Anderson or I can pick you up in Greenville, Spartanburg, wherever, and go to wherever local airport you need to go to. So if you have a meeting down in Charleston or Edisto Beach or Savannah, we just do a direct flight down there. It saves you a lot of time. Uh, we also provide a cargo service and light, or light, light cargo passenger and also uh, we do organ procurement flights. So time sensitive uh, uh, cargo we carry uh, direct at a, at a huge time saving where time is critical. Are you starting to see a, a greater demand for people wanting the service? Yes, we are. Uh, it's my, my, right now I'm split about 50-50 between passengers and organ procurement. Uh, organ procurement is uh, very random and a lot of pieces of that puzzle have to come together and now I'm, I'm a small piece of that puzzle because I have a uh, specialist that calls me and asks me if we can do the flight and then that's if, very time sensitive it too. is very time sensitive so they need to see if I can do the flight if I can't do it they'll find somebody else um, because once the organ is procured it has a, a very short time frame from uh, when it's been procured to where it needs to go so for example like last week I had uh, picked up a uh, organ up in uh, Maxton, North Carolina and delivered down Birmingham. It would have been about a 10 hour drive and we did the flight in two hours. So uh, we were able to uh, hopefully save somebody's life there doing that, providing that service. And this is, at least in recent history, this is the first time Anderson Regional Airport's had anything like this, right? Uh, uh, Mr. Garrison, uh, uh, who is the manager now, his father had a charter service uh, back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. I was going to say it's been a while. And it's been a while. Um, and so, we, yes, we are, uh, recent, in recent years, the first one back here. Yeah. You talk about the differences. Y'all will fly pretty much anywhere in the southeast, is that... That's correct. Yeah. So, so let's say somebody wanted to go from here to Nashville. How long would that take in an, an airplane rather than, you know, we know how long it takes to drive. So. Right. So about an hour and a half up to Nashville. Right. Yeah. And uh, I think that'd be about eight hour drive with no traffic. Right. Uh, go through Atlanta nowadays and construction on 85 and 75. That's, uh, that's one of what we, is, we specialize in is getting here there quickly and safely. And how many people could a group could you take? I mean, if the group wanted to comfortably go? about three people, uh, and uh, uh, carrying three people with their baggage and, and enough fuel. So we are a little weight sensitive uh, with airplanes. There's always a compromise, right? And uh, we, I know people probably experience that on the airlines where they say, "Hey, we can't take so many bags, and your bag is shipped." So we work really uh, diligently to make sure that we're uh, within the legal bounds of our weight and balance. And so I'd like to say about, you know, three people comfortably on a good flight up to Nashville, we could easily do. And if people wanted to, to procure your services, how far in advance do they need to start talking to you about it? Well, uh, the more advanced, the better, but you know, we are on demand. So, uh, I can have his be up and running as little as two hours, uh, is, is a good time frame uh, with the organ procurement stuff. They give me a call, and that, that ninety-minute mark is a is a, a, a goal we aim for. So, and so if somebody, if it is a business thing or something, you, you would fly them, like you just mentioned Charleston. You'd fly them to Charleston and then just then wait on them in return. Is that that's correct. Yeah, that's pretty standard. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And is it is it uh, has it become more affordable? Because it used to be fairly. It used to be kind of a you know, valet kind of. Right. Uh, it is a, a higher end service, but we are very competitive with the operators, the charter operators out of the Greenville area. I have a lower overhead, uh, lower cost, and uh, so I'm we're pretty competitive price wise. What do you think about the new Anderson Airport's upgrades and the continual upgrade of the road and laser up doing and the new terminal here? What's your, been your impression of all this? Uh, very positive on how they are seeing this is a. Uh, a good way for the county to grow. Uh, kind of think of it as this is the highway for growth into and out of Anderson. So a lot of companies that need to come in, fly in. You think, you know, business people flying in, but also a lot of cargo. Uh, 
comes in and out of here as well. That stuff you don't really, you know, it's not glamorous, but a lot of, uh, you know, with the automotive support industries around here, uh, there's there's a lot of demand for uh, getting cargo in and out of Anderson. So. And you and you know a lot of pilots and, and people who've been flying on, what, what's the impression people are of, of the upgrades here? What are, what are people saying about Anderson? Very positive. Yes, this is, this is a uh, very revolutionary high class terminal. Very good impression when you first come in at Anderson, seeing this, seeing the new FBO, uh, and then the runway, whole airfield maintenance has been great. And, and, and uh, having a, a really positive first impression is, is nice here. It's, it's a very, this is one of the cleanest, newest terminals I've seen. And I've flown, fly to a lot of airports in the area. And this is a, this is a world-class airport. And growing up in Clemson, have you known Brett a long time? I mean, yeah, I kind of I grew up in the, uh, with him and his brother. Uh, they're, they're older. Uh, I'm uh, a little younger than them, but you know, when I was coming up through the ranks, getting my licenses, I always asked them for advice on things they've been there, done that, got the T-shirt, you know. So they're uh, been very, very supportive of us uh, growing this charter operation, and very supportive uh, just in general. Uh, good, good group of good family. Uh, have been very aviation and. Uh, oriented here and positive for the for the community and his dad really is i mean sort of pioneer in aviation in the upstate here. oh yeah he's, he's a legend he, he had a lot of stuff started clemson and, yep uh, yeah i believe he ran both airports back in the day and and uh did he did a lot he really got things started in the area you know he's a hall of fame and uh and member in the south carolina aviation hall of fame um and he raised two great sons and they've made he's made a good legacy for both airports are the skies getting more crowded? Are there more planes in the sky? There are. It's getting bit. It's it's good busy. Um, we've I've noticed an uptick in in uh, private flying uh, due to the pandemic. A lot of people, you know, uh, they want to get up and, and get out uh, there. And there has been a, a big up a big demand in uh, private air charter for that reason, especially during the uh, not only for the uh, uh, safety aspect of of social distancing, but also the convenience factor. As we noticed, a lot of the airlines have overbooked. There's still the big backlog in training. And as you probably saw last week, there was a big, big old uh, uh, cancellation with another airline down in Florida, I believe. And that that's uh, hard to uh, make plans if you know the airline's gonna cancel your flight. For somebody who's never flown a chartered plane, to describe how you, how you leave and how you land and not, not having to go through all the same you know, structural things if you're going on a commercial airline. Right? right, so it's, you basically come here to the airport and you park and way well, you meet you in the, in the lobby. Uh, we just have to verify your ID and all that. We do have to verify that you go through, TS, you know, you don't go through the uh, screening uh, like you do at the airport, but we do verify you're not on the uh, do not fly list. And so we do comply with TSA standards with that. Um, when you come out to the airplane and when you want to, it's your schedule. You know, I tell people if they, you know, don't worry about being late. If you, if we're late, if you're late, you're on the airlines. So you're not late. You're with us. So uh, you show up whenever you know when when you need to, and we leave when you want to and come back. That's part of it. That's part of the on the man part. Is you uh, have rent, essentially rented the airplane and then the service, and we make it work for your schedule. And so when you land somewhere and you get off, how, how do you deplane and all that? Is that it, same thing like coming into here. Uh, you come, we pull right up to the to the lobby. A lot of times, if we can have a, uh, your transportation, if you rent a car, if you're if you're having a car service pick you up, we try to get you out, have them right by the airplane. And my goal is to have you take two or three steps from off the plane into the car, and then you're off to wherever you need to go. And for people who want to know how to book it, what's in, where can they find the information or what can you tell them? Absolutely. I have a website, clumpsonair.com. You can go on. There's a, a request quote feature. You just fill out your information, and you don't need to know the airport you need, you're going to. You just put in the location, and it will find the closest suitable airport. That, you know, if you're going down to Charleston or you don't know, it might be closer to Walterboro or, or instead of Charleston International. So we'll go into Walterboro because it's going to be 20 minutes closer to you. You just put in your location where you want to go, the dates, how many people, and we'll send you back a quote with the best estimate. How did you get interested in flying? I got interested. My dad was a pilot uh, and grew up around the airport, uh, and I've always been always been interested in airplanes, machinery. Uh, could never focus in school, so I was always you know drawing airplanes, doodling, looking out the window. Uh, so I've always 
always been interested in airplanes and flying. So I uh, started my first job was washing airplanes out at the airport and uh, was able to pay for lessons that way and kind of work my way up doing that. So you still enjoy getting in the, in the air? And Absolutely. Absolutely. I love doing this. I uh, flew for the airlines for a couple of years and it was a great experience, a lot of training. Uh, worked in the training department there as well, so we're very uh, r rigorous, uh, high standards of training, but this is the, uh, I really enjoy this kind of flying. You get down, you know, you're lower, you're not at 30,000 feet, you know, we're get able to see the countryside and also interact with some really good people. And are you are you expecting to see a, a, an increased demand here? I am. I am. With how Anderson has uh, built this FBO, they built it for growth, and if you build it, they're gonna they're gonna come. Uh, this has left a really good impression with a lot of people, and it's a lot of times when people are coming in, industries coming in looking to establish the airports, the first place they land, and they see, hey, they're serious, and okay, well, they're ready to do business. So I I do know that this is going to grow the county in many ways. Mm -hmm.